morning, Willingdon Church. Thanks for being here. We've got a great service lined up for you. Today is our last weekend in our current sermon series, which is Shine Like Stars. Next week, we start our Easter series, so lots of exciting things coming up. Why don't we start the service by standing and just join me as we pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I pray that you would just bless our time together, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you um, just be present and be moving among us, Lord. Miracles happen, would breakthrough happen, would restoration happen.
magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt his name together. More hallelujahs. Come on, let's sing. That praise be the weapon that silences the enemy. That praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it arise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. circumstance we are called to praise amen though sorrow may last for the night joy comes in the morning we are called to praise it make a joyful noise to the Lord at all times praise him amen you might find yourself in a difficult situation today praise him and worship him I can't hold back my praise I gotta let it out I can't hold back my praise I gotta let it out I can't hold back my praise I gotta let it out I can't hold back my
worship service, we're gonna spend some time in prayer. And yes, sometimes this happens at the end of service, but we're gonna try doing it right now. And so I'd like to invite pastors and elders and life group leaders to come forward just at the front of this platform here, and they are available if you wanna come forward and have someone pray with you during this time. And we also invite you to take some time to reflect and pray on your own, or maybe even pray for someone who came with you to church today, someone beside you. We're just singing about how fear can't survive when we praise God, and yeah. we're worshiping a God of breakthrough, that there's no place for fear and anxiety when we are praising God. And I just want to remind you what scripture says that in the book of John, there will be tribulation and trials and hardship in this lifetime, in this world, but take heart because Christ has overcome. Christ has overcome. So take heart today. Whatever fears you might be carrying, whatever anxieties you might have, maybe there is sin that needs to be confessed to repent of. Remember that Christ calls us to repentance by his loving kindness. Don't be afraid. Come to him. He invites you to himself. So take this time, worship him, praise him, confess to him. Have someone pray with you if you so choose before we sing this next song.
whatever we face, still be my vision, our vision, be our wisdom, be our strength. Help us to fix our eyes on you. Lord, as we lift up all these requests in prayer to you, we know that you hear us. We know that you love us. We know that you care. So we ask as we pray that our hearts would be aligned with yours. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is our prayer. So we give this time to you. We give you our worship and offering to you. May you open our eyes to see more of you, to fall more in love with you today as we see your faithfulness and what you have done and what you will continue to do. We pray this all in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, before you take a seat, why don't you turn to your neighbor and just say hello, good morning, and welcome each other here. You may be seated. Well, my name is Mark, and I'm one of the pastors here at Willingdon Church. And my name is Naomi. I'm one of the 12th graders who is part of our student ministries here at the church, and we would like to welcome you all to Willingdon today. If this is your first time at Willingdon, then uh, we are blessed to have you, and we would love for you to fill out a Connect card that's right in front of you. You can also go and get connected at our Welcome Center in the lobby. It's a great place to ask questions and just get to know about our community and church family here at Willingdon. It's our in-service weekend this weekend, and we're blessed to be able to worship together as a multi-generational and intercultural church family. So a big shout out to all the students who are here worshiping with their families today. Yeah. It's good to hear you guys. And just a reminder, uh, next week is daylight savings. So we will be springing our clocks forward one hour. So don't forget, don't sleep in, or you will be attending the 1145 service next week. <laughs> we also have a prayer summit coming up on March 13th at 7 p.m. And it's going to be in the connection. We will be spending time in worship and praying to what it looks like as individuals and as a church family to live out discipleship, family, and missions. And just take note that the cafe is going to be open uh, before for a dinner and also after as well. Now, just a, a church family note. Uh, we just want to make known to you that uh, we, our brother Dan Balzer uh, went to be home with the Lord this week. And he's been a faithful servant here at the church for years. And so we just want to let you know that on March 16th, there will be a memorial service here for, for Dan at 2 p.m. on March 16th. So just keep the Balzer family in your prayers. Now I'd like to read for you the scripture for today's message, Acts chapter 11, verse 19 to 30. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen <clears throat> traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And in Antioch the disciples were first called Christians. Now in these days prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them, named Agabus, stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined everyone according to his ability to send relief to the brothers living in Judea. And they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Thank you, Naomi, for reading the word. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Let's just stay, remain standing as we pray. So, Father, we uh, 
just thank you again for your word. And we thank you for the way that it instructs us. And uh, we pray that we would come to an understanding of this passage and a few others and what they mean for us uh, during our time, during our day that you have given us here on earth. And so we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We pray for open hearts and minds. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. So uh, Pastor Mark and Naomi gave a shout-out to all the students and uh, kids among us. But who, we never give a shout-out like to builders and boomers and Gen Xers and millennials. So shout-out to all of you as well. Thanks for being here. <clears throat> I was just feeling excluded. <laughs> um, this is the final message in this sermon series, Shine Like Stars, A Different Kind of Light. And we began this series uh, at New Year's Eve where we should always begin with Jesus. Jesus said in, Ma in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We can do nothing of eternal significance apart from Jesus. That's the truth. In order to abide in Jesus, we need to abide in his word. So Jesus also said in John chapter 8, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So as we abide in Jesus and his word, we receive his vision for life. It's through reading the word that we begin to recognize some of the things or some of the people that we have turned into idols in our hearts. The word leads us to dethrone money, for example, and to put our trust in Jesus, to trust him for provision, and then to give generously. The Word guides us to find our identity in Jesus and to follow Him in every area of our lives. And so it, we find in Scripture this fresh vision, this biblical vision for marriage and for sex and for family, and we embrace it with enthusiasm. To receive fresh vision for life, we need to rise above what we normally see. Do you remember the first time that you flew in an airplane? So maybe you've spent your life looking horizontally at Mount Baker, and you think, oh my goodness, my neighborhood may blow up. And then you get in a plane, and you rise about 10,000 feet above the surface of the earth, and you realize it's not just Mount Baker, but there is also Mount Rainier, and then there's Mount Adams and Mount St. Helens and Mount Shasta, and I'm not naming them all. The whole world will maybe blow up. The point is, if you abide in Jesus and his word, you will be led to see more clearly, and you will see farther. If we don't abide in God's word, then our vision will be, it'll be too small. It'll be too limited, far too self-serving. As I've said before, one of the urban churches in Scripture that I believe serves as a model for us at Willingdon that has much to say to us is the church at Antioch. Allow me to set the context. So after his resurrection, Jesus said this to his disciples. This is in Acts 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So following these words, Jesus ascended to heaven, and the disciples, they dedicated themselves to prayer in a room in Jerusalem. Ten days later, the Holy Spirit descended upon them, and they began to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, and the church grew exponentially. Immediately, the religious establishment reacted the religious leaders started to persecute this early, early church just as they had persecuted Jesus. In fact, Stephen, one of these disciples, he was preaching a message in Jerusalem, and at the end of that sermon, he was stoned. He was the first martyr. The church was scattered, but as they went out, they carried with them the gospel. So Philip, he evangelized Samaria. There was a move of God in Samaria. Peter went to Caesarea, and there he evangelized 
the family of a Roman centurion. And not only that, people went up to Phoenicia, modern-day Lebanon, others to Cyprus, and yet others went to Antioch in the Roman province of Syria. It was the third largest city in the empire after Rome and Alexandria. Antioch was situated on a river, and it was nestled up against the Lebanon and Antares mountains. An island in the river, it had a, a palace and a hippodrome. There were bridges connecting the island to the other parts of the city. It was known as Antioch the Beautiful. So not unlike beautiful Metro Vancouver, where we have a, a, the Fraser River flowing through the different municipalities and the city as a whole nestled up against the North Shore Mountains, a beautiful place. The main city of Antioch, it had baths and theaters and many temples. You know, many different gods were being worshipped in this city. It had a thriving economy. But it was also known for its immorality throughout the empire. So it desperately needed to hear the good news of Jesus. What happened when the disciples from Jerusalem began to proclaim the gospel in Antioch? Antioch. Well, there was a move of God. It was the first large-scale movement of non-Jews coming to faith in Jesus. And we read in chapter 11, verse 21, that the hand of the Lord was with them. That means that God's power was working through people as they shared the good news of Jesus. And many people from different ethnic backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, came to faith in Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. In fact, the person that wrote the book of Acts, the passage that we just read, Luke, the medical doctor, he was a, most likely a resident of Antioch, and it was there that he came to faith in Jesus. News of this move of God in Antioch, well, it reached the ears of the church leaders in Jerusalem, and they said, okay, we need to check it out. And so they sent one of their own, Barnabas, up to Antioch, and what a great guy to send because he was a bridge builder, he was known as the son of encouragement, and when he got to Antioch, he noticed that God's grace was evident among the people. In fact, we read in verse 23, this is what he did. He exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose. In other words, he invited these new disciples to abide in Jesus and to remain committed to God's purposes for their lives. As he did this, more and more people responded to the good news of Jesus, and soon the work just became far too much for him. He couldn't disciple all these people on his own. So he ran up to Tarsus, where Saul was living. That's in modern-day Turkey. Saul later became Paul. And the verb there in Acts 11 indicates that it was kind of hard to find Paul, because Paul, he was always on the move. But anyways, he found him, and then the two of them came back to Antioch, and full of, for a full year, they instructed this church in the Scriptures. We read in verse 26, and in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Now, that's an interesting word. Up to this point, the believers have been called disciples or followers of the way. You see in the word Christian, the word Christ. Christ means anointed one. And then you see the Latin ending to the word, ianus. That means belonging to or identifying with. So the word Christian literally means those who belong to Jesus, those who identify with Jesus. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? Well, we belong to Jesus and we follow him together. We belong to Jesus. We identify with him. Even when those around us may despise us for it, may not place the value on Jesus that we place on him. Turn your eyes to the screen. Jesus called us to make disciples of all nations. But is this possible in a world where there are so many distractions and so much opposition to Christianity? Just as the early church was birthed and grew under persecution, the Holy Spirit continues to move and call new disciples to Christ today. 
We are all too familiar with the quest for self-recognition and the demand that others agree with our personal opinions and chosen expressions of self. But even still, God is raising up a generation of those who recognize the voice of Jesus. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Here at Willingdon Church, we celebrate the many ways we see God adding to his church and working through us to make disciples of Jesus from peoples of all nations. Many are putting their trust in Jesus and wholeheartedly surrendering to him, making him Lord over every area of their lives and being transformed more and more into his image. All generations are being discipled through Willingdon Church. For example, kids are introduced to the person of Jesus through kids' ministries, events, and programs. Students are learning to stand firm in God's Word through Student Ministries midweek gatherings. And parents are being equipped to disciple their children through family ministries. We're excited to see adults growing in their understanding of God's Word and Christian ministry through Willing and School of the Bible and Ministry, and new leaders being equipped to discover their calling through internships and the master's degree in transformational leadership. Discipleship, it's a lifelong journey. When I first came to Willingdon Church in second grade, I was shocked at how big the community was after being in a small church. The stage was so big, the sanctuary filled to the brim, and I felt as if I could never connect personally with the church. I'm so grateful for the smaller communities within the church, such as junior high. Within this community, I got to grow my faith exponentially with friends, mentors, youth events, volunteer opportunities, and so much more. For example, I attend the Bible study every Monday, and it's such a great experience to have discussions with other students and learn more about God through the leaders and the Bible. God calls us to be in relationships with other Christians to help grow us grow in our faith and become more like Jesus. Willingdon Church truly goes above and beyond in this command with so many ways to have personal connections with others. When we think about people at Willingdon on a discipleship journey, here are a few things that we should keep in mind. Last year, 2023, we received about 1,433 visitors. Those were visitors who actually signed the Connect card. That's not all of the people that visited Willingdon. But of that group of 1,433, about 70% were from the international language community. So one of the ways that we try to serve this group is through ESL classes. Did you know that right now we have 310 people in ESL classes at Willingdon? That would be like a school, right? Yeah, you can clap for that. Um, and what's really cool is that there are about 40 teachers teaching those students, and almost all of them are from Willingdon. What a great opportunity. What a wonderful, practical way to help people that are new to Canada. Of the 1,433 that came last year, about 34% are not yet believers, not yet followers of Jesus. So, Something new that's happening today for the first time is there's a, a new initiative called Connect and Explore, and that'll happen during the third service. It's going to happen over a meal, a warm space where newcomers to Willingdon can explore life and faith. They may be curious about the church family. They may be curious about Jesus. And so it's going to be a great opportunity for, you know, conversation, interactive sessions over a meal, talking about Jesus and what it means to follow him, what it means to belong to him. For many years, Willingdon has offered something called discovery, so nine discovery courses that help people understand what it means to belong to Jesus, what does it mean to be a part of this church family. They also guide new disciples and older disciples in their journey with Jesus, help them mature in different areas. It's been amazing. Right now, we have about 150 people in discovery classes, like that's today, in 20 different classes. So again, that's something we really praise God for. At the same time, 
there's about 100 students who are studying the Word and exploring God's calling on their life throughout the week through WSBM classes. There's another group of leaders from Willingdon, very active in ministry here, that are studying on the graduate level. They're completing their master's in transformational leadership through MB Seminary. And I know that there are many here studying in other schools as well. So we celebrate God raising up workers and people equipping, being equipped for service. It's beautiful. And a number of people are asking for pastoral internships. People come to Willingdon at different stages in the discipleship journey. And our desire is to meet people where they're at. So if they aren't followers of Jesus, and introduce them to Jesus. And if they're new believers, then we want to help them take the next steps of obedience. Discipleship, it's a lifelong journey. What everyone has in common, everyone that comes to Willingdon, they're looking for belonging. They're looking for relationship. We want to welcome people the way that Jesus has welcomed us, with an unconditional Love. So, returning to the story of the church in Antioch, the city's population was estimated to be about half a million. And that population, it was made up of Greeks and Syrians and Phoenicians, read Lebanese, Jews, Arabs, Persians, Egyptians, and Indians. So, a very diverse population. Now, what was sad was that there were dividing walls between the different ethnic groups. The different ethnic groups tended to live within their own neighborhood. The question is, what happened when people from different religious backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds, came to faith in Jesus? Well, these ethnic barriers, linguistic barriers, became rather obsolete. (laughs) People from different ethnic and religious backgrounds, different uh, social and economic layers, they all came together to form one beautiful church family. And this intercultural, multi-ethnic, multilingual family was even reflected in the church leadership. Look at chapter 13, verse 1 of Acts. Now, there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, a lifelong friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. So we've already talked about Barnabas a little bit. He was a really good man. He was a a bridge builder, an encourager. He was a Hellenist Jew from Cyprus. And then there was Simeon called Niger. So Niger means black in Latin. So many believe that Simeon was actually a black African from Ethiopia. And then there was Lucius of Cyrene. Uh, Cyrene is in North, North Africa. And then there was Manayang. He was uh, a lifelong friend of Herod, the Tetrarch. So he was raised with Herod Antipas. And Herod Antipas ruled over Galilee and Perea. So he was a man of high social standing. And then there was Saul of Tarsus, a Hellenist Jew from Tarsus, which is now in Turkey. So we've got this diverse church family. We've got a diverse leadership team, and they come together to serve God as one. We can't help but see the parallels between this, you know, multi-ethnic, diverse church family in Antioch and what God has crafted here at Willingdon. People worshiping God in many different languages. We have over 75 countries represented in this church family. We're a family. And the wonderful thing in Jesus is that we belong to one another. We belong to one another in Jesus. And we, as a church family, want to welcome others to our family as we have been welcomed by Jesus. Turn your eyes to the screen. Family. The term family can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. We can think of blood family, those who share last names, or something as small as shared hobbies. But the family of God is beautiful and unique. God the Father has adopted us into His eternal family. We are His sons and daughters. We are brothers and sisters in Jesus. And we love each other because Jesus first loved us. At Willingdon, God has woven together an intercultural, intergenerational family where people of all languages, cultures, and generations are welcomed as Jesus has welcomed us. We welcome people through friendship, kids, student, imagined ministries, 
discovery groups, life groups, men's and women's groups, and international language ministry fellowships. We welcome immigrants and refugees. We are called to care for our brothers and sisters in Jesus and for those beyond the church family because God cares so much for us. God desires for us to have a deeply embedded culture of care. The type that makes us go out of our way like the Good Samaritan. This culture of care is being formed through faithful, caring conversations and healing ministries such as Freedom Session, Grief Share, and soon to be launched Prison Ministries. At Willingdon, we long to see the marginalized, isolated, broken, and grieving restored in Jesus and discovering genuine family. Initially, our coming to Willingdon appeared to be purely circumstantial. Our previous church needed to change their service times due to COVID, and with two young kids, the times just didn't work for us. Uh, we live quite close to Willingdon and wanted to find a church that preached the word. Uh, and a place where, as a family, we'd be able to connect with other believers. At Kids Ministry Willing event, Under the Big Top, in 2022, my wife heard about the Moms Connect group. She began attending that and has been doing it ever since, and that's given her an opportunity to connect with many women through that. I began meeting with one of the care pastors to sort through my own issues, uh, which in turn led me to uh, participate in the Worship Arts Ministry family, providing an opportunity to serve in the Christmas production, which it was a lot of fun. From there, we joined a life group, which has connected us with more parents with young kids. And we're not too sure what God has for us in this next season of life, but we're grateful to be able to process God's calling with this church family. So Tim and Rachel, they were welcomed in a variety of, of settings, and they've found a home. As I said earlier, everyone coming to Willingdon is looking for a place to belong. Currently, we have about 100 life groups and 12 international language ministry fellowships. We welcome people into these groups. Our prayer is that God will raise up more life group leaders, more ILM fellowship leaders, and that these groups will multiply. Why? Not only so that those who participate can experience the joy of that, but so that more can be welcomed into the church family. People need relationship. Another thing that happens here every Sunday, we don't always see it when we're here in the auditorium, but there are 400 kids down in Kids Men and 250 students from grades 6 to 12. So we need more volunteers so that we can welcome more children and their parents. Our mission, what is it? We reach out in love to those who do not yet belong. We reach out in love to those who do not belong. You know, the church in Antioch, it was vibrant. It was dynamic. Every church committed to Jesus, committed to the gospel of Jesus, to the truth, and living in relationship will be vibrant and dynamic. It'll reach its city and it'll go beyond. The natural move of the, of the Spirit in a church is for it to reach its Jerusalem and then its Judea and Samaria and then eventually to go to the ends of the earth. In Antioch, the first way that they move beyond themselves is by giving generously. There was a, a great famine in Judea under the reign of Claudius, at the time of Claudius. And the church in Antioch responded generously. They gave as they were able. And then that was not the only way that they moved beyond themselves. The Spirit of God began to work among them in a fantastic way. Look at Acts chapter 13, verses 2 and 3. This happened as they prayed and fasted. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. This was God's timing. These anointed ones who belong to Jesus, they embark on their first missionary journey. And then in the following years, John Mark, Silas, and others are also sent out from this church in Antioch. Antioch, it sent not only money, but also people. What kind of church hears God's call to global mission. Well, in the case of Antioch, it was a church that had committed itself to Jesus. 
They were grounded in the Scriptures. They walked full of the Holy Spirit. The grace of God was evident among them, and they boldly proclaimed the good news of Jesus in Jerusalem and beyond. God gifted them with a vision to see a world that did not yet belong to Jesus. The Word of God always goes out from centers like Jerusalem, Antioch, and Metro Vancouver. A church that thrives locally, it'll have a global impact. So our mission statement here at Willingdon is a family on mission with Jesus, everyone, every day, everywhere. Say that with me. A family on mission with Jesus, everyone, every day, everywhere. So the call is for all of us, every one of us, to participate in this mission. That's God's vision for us. Turn your eyes to the screen. Jesus says, behold, I am making all things new. That's God's mission, to restore and renew and reconcile all things. As believers in Jesus, we are invited and commanded to participate in God's mission of redemption. Our mandate is to help all the peoples of the earth encounter Jesus and worship him. As God's ambassadors, his representatives, we seek to see the world transformed by proclaiming the good news of Jesus and living out God's love, justice, and truth in a world broken by sin and selfishness. That's our mission. Our Willingdon Church family has the honor and joy of participating in God's mission in a whole bunch of ways here and around the world. From our weekly Sunday gatherings where salvation through Jesus is shared with children, students, and adults, to our seasonal outreach presentations where we creatively share the gospel to our community. To serving people who have significant needs in our city and all the way to sending missionaries all around the world. Willingdon is making an effort to be receptive and obedient to God's invitation and command. We do this with the guidance and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I recently had a chance to teach a Discovering Jesus class to a group of people here at Willingdon who come from a part of the world where being a Christian can be dangerous. As I talked through the sessions, people were so engaged, I was confident that some would turn to Jesus. During session six, I asked the class, are you ready to accept Jesus as Lord? There was dead silence. I was surprised and discouraged. I went home that day sad and frustrated and confused. But then things changed. Later that day, I got a text message from one of the guys in the class. He said, how he was so shy in the class that morning. Since no one else was ready to give their life to Jesus, he didn't want to be the only one. But he told me that Jesus is my savior. And I believe that with all my heart, there is no other way. And I want to follow him for the rest of my life and commit my life to him. Hallelujah. That evening, the Holy Spirit prompted me to ask the remaining group members a question. Do any of you want further conversation about today's session? Immediately, people started texting me, calling me. They all said the same thing. They were ready to receive Jesus as Lord. One person who had gone back to her country of origin partway through the class also decided to follow Jesus, even though the risk of persecution is very real for her. She said, when you are so sure about something in your heart, no matter what the cost is, I'd rather die with Jesus than live without him. Amen. <clears throat> so through Kiana and many of you, the gospel of Jesus Christ is being shared and God's purposes through the Willingdon Church family are being accomplished. Uh, another thing that's happening is that our ministry to refugees is growing. So through House of Umid, where Kiana works, we've been uh, 
serving uh, Iranian and Afghani refugees. Our Russian language ministry uh, helped about 40 refugee families from Ukraine. Last year, we continue to support Journey Home, a ministry to refugees that grew out of Willingdon, and also the Willingdon House over on Harkin. If you haven't seen it, walk over there and seen it. We know that the immigrant and the refugee are on God's heart. In 2024, we'll send six short-term mission teams. They will go to places like Thailand and France, South Africa, Brazil, yay Brazil, um, and uh, about eight people, yeah, you can cheer for Brazil over here. This is where Brazil sits, by the way. Um, about eight people, according to Pastor John, eight individuals and couples, they're discerning longer-term commitments to global missions. So this is exciting. Would God be calling you or your family to go? Here in Metro Vancouver, we've been discerning God's purposes for us in the different hubs of Burnaby. So when I think of the hubs of Burnaby, it's Metrotown, Brentwood, Edmonds, Lougheed. This past year, in a very surprising way, God has, he appears to be opening up a new opportunity for us in the city of Lougheed, Coquitlam area. Uh, over the past year, members of our pastoral team have been preaching at Blue Mountain. Uh, you know, not every Sunday, but quite often. At the same time, that church has been discerning its future. In fact, they've been discerning their future over the past two years. Six months ago, they began to engage our leadership team in the process, and they asked us what it might mean for us to partner with them. We prayerfully presented a campus proposal, and last Sunday, their church family, uh, in a congregational meeting, they voted in favor of becoming a Willingdon campus, 98% in favor. So, we are still in, we're working through all of the legalities of what this will mean, but we are enthusiastically engaging in the process together with them, and we invite you to pray with us. The vision of our church family, it is growing. Praise God for that. That involves not only our staff team, but all of the volunteers, all of you. We want to do all the things that God calls us to do. As we abide in Jesus and his word, our vision for his kingdom will grow and we'll begin to trust God to do things far beyond anything we could ever ask or imagine. What God is doing at Willingdon, it is not just for us, but for Metro Vancouver and for the nations. So may we surrender ourselves fully to Jesus and his purposes for us. As we do that, we'll receive his heart of love. For those right around us in our relationship network, but also others in Metro Vancouver, and even perhaps a people group that has not yet heard the good news of Jesus. Please turn your eyes to the screen for a staff video. So, this is our beautiful staff team. Let's uh, give them a hand. It's 
So there's a few more coming. Yeah, Emily, Evelyn. Uh, someone commented to me between services, well, great to have the spouses up there. I said, no, <laughs> we don't have any spouses up here. Uh, this is our staff team, and there are more that are actively engaged in ministry right now. So we are thankful for this very dedicated team, dedicated to not only their re- to Jesus, but also to his mission here at Willingdon and through Willingdon. So thankful for the way that they serve in many different areas. And uh, yeah, they are a gift to me, to the Willingdon Church family, and to many others beyond the church family. So, uh, yeah, give them a hand. They, they deserve it. And this good-looking group of, of gentlemen here in the corner, these are elders, and we're going to ask uh, Jim. Yeah. I was looking for you. You were hiding. We're going to ask Jim to just say a word and pray for our staff team. Well, you know, church family, when you think about what we've all gone through in the last two or three years with COVID and uh, just watched a sense of fear come across our land, it was a difficult time. Many had doubts and wondered, all of us did, how's this all going to turn out? But can I show you what happens when the Lord God Almighty, who reigns and rules and oversees every problem that you and I will ever have in our life, this is the outcome. This is your staff. You've watched and now you see God's almighty hand doing miracles right here, right now, and you're a living part of it. So the future is bright because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He keeps all his promises, even to the thousandth generation of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So I'd like to pray for us all. Father, your hand is at work. You've brought us a vision. You've renewed our strength. You've opened up opportunities. And through dedication, through prayer, through fasting, you've given us a direction to follow now that brings great encouragement to each of our hearts and to We pray to everybody that's here today, Father. May they be lifted up on high today, knowing that you love them. Every one that's here is precious to you. Father, I think uh, as we move into this vision and these expansion of ministries and this growth and all of these opportunities that you put before us, that we need to remember too that this is a walk of grace. We need you, Jesus, every step of the way. So Holy Spirit, we want to pray to bring you into every step we take. We invite you to change us, to mold us, to take anything away from us that you need us to become more like Jesus and to receive all these blessings that you have for us. I recall the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. So now, Father, it's an opportunity. This is not a destination. This is a journey. This is one step in a journey that comes by walking by faith and not by sight. John said in chapter 6, verses 28 and 29, when his disciples said to Jesus, so what is the work of God? And Jesus said, this is the work of God, to believe in the one that he sent. So we're here, Father, to say we love you. We commit this journey to you. We ask you to help us to walk by faith and not by sight, 
We pray a prayer of blessing upon every person that's here today over this staff or over these visions and beautiful dreams you've given us about what can be accomplished for your glory. And we commit it to you. We thank you for being our perfect Father in heaven. Thank you, Father, for loving every person that's in here, everyone, unconditionally. Thank you for the hope. Thank you for the bright future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift our hearts and maybe encourage you to lift your hands and let's lift our voices in one great chorus of praise to our Father whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's sing it again. you to do something uh, today or this week. Uh, yesterday when I came into the office, there was a little note uh, waiting for me. It was written by a junior high student, and it read, thank you, Pastor Ray, for what you do in the main room. So uh, anyways, I would encourage you to uh, encourage our staff. You can easily find them on our website if you don't know them, and just write them a note of encouragement. It means a lot. And then secondly, Continue to pray for this staff team. Pray for our church family. We have much to pray for. There's a prayer summit on March 13th. I'd encourage you to come. We'll be praying over all of the things that I talked about today. So do be in prayer. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. That is true. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. But with Jesus, all things are possible. So we trust him to lead us, to guide us forward to fill us with his Holy Spirit so that we can do more than we could ever imagine on our own. Be in prayer. Encourage the team. Encourage one another. It's not just our staff team that is at work. We have over a 1,000 volunteers, very active. And so we all get to be a part of what God is doing. We get to be a part of what God is doing for eternity. It's amazing. So. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as you serve him. You may have questions. We have questions. Uh, today, there's kiosks set up in the lobby. If you have a question about anything that's been shared uh, or about Blue Mountain, perhaps, some people will be there trying to answer your questions. And if you're really interested, there'll be a meeting in April, an interest meeting, and just an invitation to in join in this exciting adventure. Anyways, be encouraged. God bless. Have a wonderful week.